Okay, the third video for today, I still have more that I, I want to tell you about uh, uh, Black Orpheus. Uh, at the beginning of it, I didn't use the whole movie with my students. I showed them the beginning and I jumped to the middle and I showed them the end. Uh, at the beginning you get a vision of Brazil. Uh, samba dancing, a samba band. Uh, I, you know, I, I like it for one thing. It's now December. It's always been December when I've shown it's cold here and you get to go to the tropics. You see banana plants, uh, women carrying water up to the favela up on their uh, on their heads, which is the right place to carry something really heavy if you have to carry it a long ways. I carry bales of hay out to my cows that, that, that way all the time. I'm probably the only farmer in Pennsylvania that does it that way, but I learned to do it in Brazil. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, I, I told you the story and I quickly told you uh, the, the, what the movie did with it. But in that opening scene, beyond the fact that, that my students get to see this vision of Brazil and hear the bossa nova music, tristeza não tem fim, felicidade sim, sadness has no end, happiness, yes, uh, neat song. Uh, uh, but then I say, now listen to the soundtrack, and you'll hear this blast of a ship's horn. I say, no, notice that. And then, uh, and up here you see a kid flying a kite, uh, and he finally speaks, uh, uh, and, and the kids realize, whoa, they're going to have to read it because he's speaking Portuguese. But the kite goes down, and then up, and then it goes down, and the second time that it goes down, it leads the eye down to the bay, down there below, and this is a transition. Now, I just talked about transitional adverbs, uh, or tra transitional adverbs in 65.1. Well, in literature, or movies, a transition is a smooth way across, there's that word trans, across, between things, between sentences, between paragraphs, between scenes. Uh, in a sense, I'm using the word transition as a transition from 65.1 to 65.3. It just turned out that way. It worked. Well, wonderful examples of them are in, uh, <clears throat> in Black Orpheus, in the opening. Uh, the, the movie is so artistically made. And then when Eurydice is arriving on the boat, she bumps into a blind man. And the blind man says to her, Oh, oh minha filha, oh my daughter, eu sinto seu coração bater aqui na sua mão como um passarinho preso. I feel your heart beat here in your hand like a caged bird, he says. And, and at first it, was, it, it said frightened bird, the first set of subtitles I had. And I complained because that's not what it, it was, a caged bird, passarinho preso. Because in the very next scene, the, the camera is placed in such a way that, that Eurydice is running across the street. And the camera follows her, so it's looking through a cage, and she's out in the street. And there's birds in there, so she looks like a caged bird. And I like to point out that that wasn't an accident. That is artistically, that's an artistically directed movie. It's one of the, and, and it's full of that kind of stuff. Uh, foreshadowing, uh, uh, I like to point that out, before Eurydice is electrocuted, you hear on the soundtrack this hum. It gets louder and louder, and I say to the kids, what is that sound? Now, I didn't define foreshadowing, because the kids usually know that. Uh, other teachers have taught it, uh, and, but, but it's such a great example of it. You know, how is she going to be killed? In the original myth, she steps on a snake. Well, where are you going to come up with a snake in, in the middle of Rio de Janeiro? Uh, and, uh, and that's foreshadowing. And then there's symbolism. Um, I think I have that already. These, are, these should be in your literary devices of your notes. That's a new one. That I don't care about. Symbolism you already have. But there's all this symbolism. Uh, when Orpheus, um, when Orpheus uh, needs help and the custodian, that he goes to the missing person's office and it's empty and the custodian's there. He's all dressed in white. And, uh, and he says, uh, uh, Come, I'll, I'll help you. And he leads him, and he takes him down this huge spiral stairs. And I'll say to the kids, now what's that symbolize? And you, they can almost always figure out, that's going down to the land of the dead. And then I'll say, and who is that guy? And they might not remember the name Charon, but he's the ferryman taking him to the land of the dead. Now, there's a gate, <laughs> and at the gate there's a big German shepherd, and, and the guy says, calma, Serbo, calma. Calm down, Cerberus. That's his name, Cerberus. Uh, uh, Hermes. 
is the name of the guy who is in charge of the trolley car system. Well, Hermes was the messenger of the gods. Um, um, <clears throat> and then at the end, uh, uh, yeah, at the I'm just going too 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 fast. I realize this, but at the end, I think I already told you it is so cleverly done. Uh, at the end, to not just end the story, but to give you this idea that it's going to happen again and again. Well, I can't make you watch the movie Black Orpheus, and, and I'm not positive you would enjoy it. But if you were in my class, and, and I had a whole class period and, and, a, and a television, I would see to it that you saw some of these. I hope you do see it, and I hope you enjoy it. Well, I'll see you tomorrow.